We turn now to look at the man who is said to have outcoped the Koch brothers in the 2016 election. His name is Robert Mercer, a secretive billionaire hedge fund tycoon who, along with his daughter Rebecca, is credited by many with playing an instrumental role in Donald Trump's election. Trump's chief strategist Steve Bannon said, quote, the Mercers laid the groundwork for the Trump revolution. Irrefutably, when you look at donors during the past four years, they have had the single biggest impact of anybody, including the Kochs. Before Bannon and Kellyanne Conway joined the Trump campaign, both worked closely with the Mercers. The Mercers bankrolled Bannon's Breitbart News, as well as some of Bannon's film projects. Conway ran a super PAC created by the Mercers to initially back the candidacy of Ted Cruz. The Mercers also invested in a data mining firm called Cambridge Analytica, which claims it has psychological profiles of over 200 million American voters. The firm was hired by the Trump campaign to help target its message to potential voters. While the Mercers have helped reshape the American political landscape, their work has all been done from the shadows. They don't speak to the media and rarely even speak in public. During the entire presidential campaign, they released just two statements. One was a defense of Donald Trump shortly after the leak of the 2005 Access Hollywood tape that showed Trump boasting about sexually assaulting women. The Mercers wrote, quote, We are completely indifferent to Mr. Trump's locker room braggadocio. They went on to write, America is finally fed up and disgusted with its political elite. Trump is channeling this disgust, and those among the political elite who quake before the boombox of media blather do not appreciate the apocalyptic choice that America faces on November 8th. We have a country to save, and there is only one person who can save it. We and Americans across the country and around the world stand steadfastly behind Donald J. Trump. Those were the words of Robert and Rebecca Mercer, one month before Trump won the election. Since the election, Rebecca Mercer joined the Trump transition team, and Robert Mercer threw a victory party of sorts at his Long Island estate. It was a hero and villains costume party. Kellyanne Conway showed up as Superwoman. Donald Trump showed up as himself. To talk more about the Mercers, we're joined now by Jane Mayer, staff writer at The New Yorker. Her latest piece headlined The Reclusive Hedge Fund Tycoon Behind the Trump Presidency, How Robert Mercer Exploited America's Populist Insurgency. Jane is also author of Dark Money, The Hidden History of the Billionaires Behind the Rise of the Radical Right, which just came out in paperback. Jane Mayer, welcome back to Democracy Now! Um, the Beginning of the piece talks about a former colleague of Mercer's saying, in my view, Trump wouldn't be president if not for Bob. Explain who Robert Mercer is. Well, he's a, as you've mentioned, an, a uh, New York hedge fund tycoon. He's a computer scientist, a kind of a math genius and an uber nerd who figured out how to game the stocks and bonds and commodities markets by using math. He runs something that's kind of like a quant fund in Long Island, and it's called Renaissance Technologies. He's the co-CEO, and uh, it just mints money. So he's enormously wealthy. Um, he earns at least $135 million a year, according to institutional investor, probably more. And um, what he's done is he has tried to take this fortune and reshape first um, the Republican Party and then America along his own lines. Um, his, his ideology is uh, extreme. He's way far on the right. He hates government, um, kind of, according to another colleague, uh, David Magerman at, at Renaissance Technologies. Uh, Bob Mercer wants to shrink the government down to the size of a pinhead. He has contempt for social services and for the people who need social services. Um, and so um, he has been a power behind the scenes in, in Trump's campaign. Um, he kind of rescued Trump's campaign in the end, he and his daughter. And, um, you know, most people think Trump was the candidate who did it on his own, had his own fortune 
and he often boasted that he needed no help and had no strings attached, and he was going to sort of throw out corruption. And, in fact, there was somebody behind the scenes who helped enormously with him. Talk about that moment when you talk about them saving Donald Trump, which has become particularly relevant today. Um, this was the time that Manafort was um, forced out as the campaign manager for Donald Trump. Uh, the campaign was in disarray. Uh, he was being forced out because of his ties to Ukraine and Russia and the money that was uh, being revealed that he might or might not have taken. So take it from there. Well, right. And this was the, the really uh, Trump's campaign was in, it was floundering. Um, it was it was in August, and um, there was headline after headline that was um, suggesting that that Paul Manafort, who had been the campaign manager, had um, really nefarious ties to the U Ukrainian oligarchs and um, pro Putin forces and. It was embarrassing. Um, and eventually, um, after a couple days of these headlines, he was forced to step down. And the campaign was, you know, s spinning in a kind of a, a, a downward spiral um, when, um, at a fundraiser out in Long Island, um, at, at Woody Johnson's house, he's the man who owns the Jets. Um, they, uh, Rebecca Mercer, the daughter of this hedge fund, hedge fund tycoon, Bob Mercer, sort of cornered Trump and said, you know, we'd like to give money to your campaign. We'll back you, but you've got to try to, you know, stabilize it. And basically, she said, and I've got just the people for you to do the job. And they were political operatives who the Mercer family had been funding for a couple of years, the main one being Steve Bannon, who is now um, playing the role to tr Trump. He's the, the political strategist for Trump. That's the role he played for the Mercer family prior to doing it for, for Trump. So these are operatives who are very close to this one mega donor. Um, the other was Kellyanne Conway, who um, uh, had been running this super fund, as you mentioned in your introduction for uh, the Cruz campaign for the, uh, that was filled with the money from the Mercers. And so she became the campaign manager. Bannon became the campaign chairman. And a third person, David Bossi, whose organization Citizens United was also very heavily backed by the Mercer family, he became the deputy campaign manager. So basically, as Trump's campaign is rescued by this gang, um, they um, encircle Trump, and since then they've also encircled Trump's White House and become very key to him. And they are the Mercer's people. Well, Jane Mayer, uh, Rebecca Mercer, whom you mentioned, is known, uh, described as the first lady of the alt-right. Now, you tried to get uh, Rebecca and Robert Mercer to speak to you for this piece. What response did you get? Oh, I mean, it was hopeless, clearly, from the start. They they have nothing but disdain for, you know, the mainstream media. Um, they um, Robert Mercer barely speaks even to people who, <laughs> who he works with and who know him. I mean, he's so silent that uh, he's, he has said often that he—or to a colleague, he said once, I should correct that, that he much prefers the company of, of cats to humans. Um, he goes through whole meetings, whole dinners, without uttering a word. He, ne he never speaks to the media. He's given, I think, one interview I know of to a, a book author. Um, and who described him as having the demeanor of an icy, cold poker player. Um, his daughter, Rebecca Mercer, who's 43 and has also worked at the family's um, hedge fund a little bit and is a graduate of Stanford, she's a little more outspoken. She'll, she has been in fundraising fund meetings on the right. She has spoken up and, and very loudly and, and irately, actually. Um, she's, but, but she doesn't speak to the press. Um, and um, so I had very little hope that they would. Can you talk about when they first met, the Mercers, Robert and Rebecca Mercer, first met Andrew Breitbart and uh, what that progression was and how they came to be linked up with, um, with Bannon? Well, sh sure. Um, the, 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 the Mercer family, um, Robert and his daughter Rebecca, 
um, met Andrew Breitbart back, I think it was late uh, 2011 or early 2012, speaking at a uh, conference of the Club for Growth, another right-wing group. And they were completely taken with Andrew Breitbart. He was a, um, pretty much the opposite kind of character from Bob Mercer. He, at Breitbart, um, was g g outspoken and gleefully provocative and uh, loved to offend people and use vulgar language just to catch their attention. And you've got this kind of tight-lipped um, hedge fund man from the far right who just fell for Breitbart big time. And he mostly what he was captivated by, I think, was Breitbart's vision, which was, we're going to—he we, said, conservatives can never win until we— um, basically take on the mainstream media and build up our own source of, of information. He was talking about declaring information warfare in this country um, on fact-based reporting and, and substituting it with their own vision. And, um, and what he needed, Breitbart at that point, was money. He needed money to set up Breitbart News, which was only just sort of a, a couple of bloggers at that point. And talk about Breitbart News, uh, about uh, what the alt-right represented, whether we're talking about anti-Semitism or white supremacy, and why they were attracted to this. Well, I mean, you know, it, it changed. What happened was—I mean, it, it started as a— um, Bright Spot, Bright, Andrew Breitbart had helped The Huffington Post get set up, and his idea was that he was going to launch The Huffington, Huffington Post of the Right. Um, and and um, and so he was setting it up, and um, his his very close friend was Steve Bannon, and Bannon had been in investment banking. So Bannon got the Mercers to put ten million dollars into turning this uh, venture into something that was really going to pack a punch, um, and 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 they were just about to launch it in a big day, they, a big way. They were a few days away from it when Andrew Breitbart died. Um, that was in March of 2012. He was only 43, and he had a sudden massive heart attack. And so this, this operation was just about to go big. Um, it was leaderless. And that's when Steve Bannon stepped in and became the head of Breitbart News. And in Bannon's hands, it became a force of uh, economic nationalism and, in some people's view, white supremacism. It ran, um, a, a, you know, a, a regular feature on black crime. It, um, it hosted and, and pretty much launched the career of Milo Yiannopoulos, who's sort of infamous for his kind of juvenile attacks on, on women and, and uh, immigrants and God knows what. You know, just it, it became a um, as Bannon had said, a platform for the alt-right, meaning the alternative to the old right, a new right that was far more angry and um, aggressive about others, people who were not just kind of the, the, the white uh, sort of conservatives like themselves. So they made a $10 million investment in Breitbart. They owned it, co-owned it. They they became the sponsors really behind it and 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 it's interesting to me that one of the things I learned was that Rebecca Mercer, um, this heiress, who's had no experience in politics, is so immersed in in running Breitbart News at this point. I mean, she her family is the money big money behind it that she she reads every story I'm told. And, and fly specs, you know, typos and, um, you know, grammar and all that kind of thing. I mean, th th there, there is a force behind Breitbart News that people don't realize, and it's the Mercer family. Um, so, um, anyway, it became very important, increasingly, on the fringe of, of conservative politics, because it pushed the conservatives um, in this country towards this, this economic nationalism, nativism, anti-immigration, pro, you know, harsh borders, um, anti-free trade, um, protectionist. And it spoke the language of populism, but right-wing populism. And, uh, Jane Mayer, I mean, as you've said, one of the things that uh, has made the Mercers so successful uh, in their political interventions is, is precisely this, the way in which they've uh, invested in an alternative uh, media and information uh, network, of which Breitbart is, of course, a very significant part. But can you also talk about the Government Accountability Institute, uh, which you discuss in your piece? 
Sure. I mean, and, what, and, and this was, you know, very much a design. You've got this family with all the money in the world wanting to change American politics, and they hadn't been very effective in their earlier efforts at this until they joined forces with Steve Bannon, who's a, a, a very um, sort of far-sighted strategist who kind of sees the big picture and understands politics. And um, so he, he very much focused their efforts on this information warfare, first with Breitbart, $10 million into that. And then after 2012, when um, the, the Mercers were very disappointed that Obama got reelected, at, with, at Bannon's direction, they started to fund a brand new organization called the Government Accountability Institute. It's based in Tallahassee. It's small. It's um, really a platform for, for one major figure, Peter Schweitzer, who is a conservative kind of investigative reporter. And, and, and what they did with this organization, which, which the Mercers poured millions of dollars into, was they aimed to kind of create the uh, drive the political narrative in the 2016 campaign. They created a book called Clinton Cash, which um, was a compendium of all the kinds of corruption allegations against the Clintons. And they, they aimed to get it into the mainstream media, where it would um, pretty much frame the picture of Hillary Clinton as a corrupt person who couldn't be trusted. Um, and, and their hope was that they would mainstream this information that they dug up. Um, it was like an opposition research organization, sort of masked as a charity um, and, and nonprofit. And they took this book, Clinton Cash, gave it to The New York Times exclusively early, and The Times then ran with a story out of it that they said they corroborated, but they ran with it, nonetheless, on their front page, which just launched this whole narrative of, of Hillary Clinton as corrupt. And it just kept echoing and echoing through the media after that. So it was a real home run for them. Um, a you year later, they made a movie version of it also, which they launched in Cannes. You're talking about Peter Schweitzer um, and, as well, the Mercers. Uh, <clears throat> what about Cambridge Analytica, um, in addition to the Government Accountability uh, Institute, and also the Mercers' obsession with the Clintons, uh, the whole issue that <laughs> well, you, you write that... about, they're cons talking about their murderers? I mean, really, I mean, one of the, th one of the challenges of writing about the Mercers, for me, was to figure out, OK, so they're big players. There are players on in the Democratic Party who put in tons of money, too. They're not the only people who put money into politics. But they're maybe the most mysterious people who put money into politics. Like, nobody really knew what do they believe, what's driving them. Um, and so I was trying to figure that out. And what I finally was able to do was talk to partners and people they work with in business and people who've known them a long time, who paint this picture of them as having these really um, peculiar beliefs and, 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 and uh, based on kind of strange far-right media. Among their beliefs are that Bob Mercer has spoken to at least three people who I interviewed about how he is convinced that the Clintons are murderers, literally have murdered people. Now, you hear that out on the fringes sometimes when you interview people who are ignorant. But these are people who are powerful, well-educated, and huge influences in the country. And, 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 and Bob Mercer was convinced that the Clintons are murderers. OK. So, that, so he's driven by this just hatred of the Clintons. And coming into 2016 is determined to try to stop Hillary Clinton. Um, and looking for a vehicle who would do that, who eventually becomes Trump. Jane Mayer, we're going to come back to this conversation. Uh, Jane Mayer is staff writer at The New Yorker. Uh, her piece is The Reclusive Hedge Fund Tycoon Behind the Trump Presidency, How Robert Mercer Exploited America's Populist Insurgency. And her book is out in paperback. Dark Money, the hidden history of the billionaires behind the rise of the radical right. There is so much to talk about. Stay with us.